As we come upon the anniversary of the Million Man March, filmmaker Spike Lee focuses on the lives of the men who traveled to Washington with his new film, Get on the Bus. This film, made for $2.4 million, was financed by a small group of men, including Danny Glover, Wesley Snipes, Will Smith, and Johnny Cochran. Joining me now, filmmaker Spike Lee. Welcome back, sir. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here, always. Uh, it's, it's always good always. to have you. Uh, can we just talk a little bit about baseball before we talk about Get mm -hmm. on the Bus? Mm -hmm. Yankees. I mean, you brought well, your cap, that's why I'm I brought my this. cap, and uh, game and one was... You were was, wearing it, and I asked you to take it off so that we could see. I had tickets for game one and two, but it rained for game one, and, and game so... game two, you're here with me. So... Yeah. That's... Sh you know, I miss game two for you, Charlie. Well, so, I appreciate that very much, yeah. And I do hope the Yankees uh, beat... I think they will beat uh, the Orioles, and they go on to win, uh, yeah. to beat the Braves in the World Series, because I think the Braves will beat the Cardinals. Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel has a book out now. Right. Uh, she's a wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. She was on the show? Not yet, but okay. she will be. Good. I promise. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to make a film about... Yes, we, were, we wanted to, and we were... The film got put in the turnaround, so it's like in limbo now, but hopefully we'll, we'll get it made. And this was one of Turner's companies, or...? Yes, Turner Pictures. Yeah. So you, are they going to make it? No, they said they weren't going to oh, make it. I said they're not going to do it. So you then, then you had to go find somebody well, else to make it. There's a, it costs you know a pretty penny, so uh, we we'll have to try to raise the money for that. Yeah. This is a Denzel picture, I hope. Well, you know he's he was interested before, not so much yeah. anymore. I think he, he says he's too old to play Jackie, but uh, we'll see. I think we'll get this film made. I, I really feel that. I mean, it, it, there's no justice in the world if you can't make a film about the life of Jackie Robinson, is it? Well, we want to make it right, and uh, we feel it's epic, and epics cost money, and we don't want to make the cheap, low-budget version of, of, of a great American's life. What makes you think it's a commercial venture? Well, I just feel that this is a piece of American history, and uh, Jackie was a pioneer. I think this is a film that would appeal the people who aren't even in, into, uh, who aren't baseball fans, because he was a very heroic and courageous man. And he's also and, a strong personality. Strong no personality, and that's violent. always, for me, what the people want to see heroes, and films have always been made about heroes. Yeah. Uh, this film, mm -hmm. why'd you make it? Make Get on the bus. This film happened kind of strangely. Uh, a producer, his name is Barry Rosenbush, mm -hmm. was sitting home one night in L.A. watching the news and had a, uh, a, a segment on about a group of African-American men who just returned from D.C. Men from Los Angeles who traveled to Washington. On a bus. They a went bus. as strange but came back as friends. And he got the idea this would be a good idea for a film. And he called his partner, Bill Borden. And Bill Borden called Ruben Cannon. And the reason why they got Ruben aboard is because both of those guys are white and be, would be problematic for them to try to do a film about the Million Man March without some type of involvement from African-American males. And then the three of them got together and they called me and said, would I be interested? And, I, and they flew to New York and I met with them and I said, let's do it. And why'd you say let's do it? I felt that, that was, it was a movie. I felt that it was a... A dramatic story. I think it's something audiences would like. I've, I've also felt that this was a great event in American history. At the same time, we did not want to recreate the march. We, I, I felt the drama would be what happens with this group of strange, diverse mm. mix of African American men. What happens before they get to the march? Yeah. You know, they're on this contained environment, 72 hours and people from all different socioeconomic, political backgrounds, and just, it's, which is a combustible mix, and just see what happens. Did the march mean anything to you personally? Oh, very much. I was deeply inspired by the march. At the same time, I, I had to see it on television because- didn't go. Three days before, uh, the surgeons removed my patella tendon from my, my left knee, so I was on crutches, but I watched it uh, on TV and, and I hope it was you did something heroic when you injured that tendon. Well, actually, uh, not to digress, but I was I injured in in, in uh, 
the Dodgers fancy baseball camp when I was doing research for the Jackie oh, Robinson yeah. project. <laughs> All right, back to the story. So right. you couldn't, you had an injured tendon, mm -hmm. and so you couldn't go, so you watched it on television, right. and you were moved because? I was moved because to just see this sea of black males who were united, strangers hug, hugging each other. People I never saw before hug them like they were their, their brothers. Uh, no violence, no drugs, no alcohol, just to see the commitment and the strength on the screen. And it was funny because you had that, what the commentators were saying was different than what you were seeing on the screen. And no matter how they tried to, to knock it by saying only 250,000 were there and focusing on Farrakhan and stuff like that, the pictures, the images were still too powerful and it just abolished all the other the negative spin they tried to put on it. Yeah, I mean, to see the interviews with the fathers and their sons, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, which is the most powerful sense of what fathers talked about in terms of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the men who came there, you know, who had no real connection with, with Farrakhan or any other particular right. black leader, mm -hmm. but who wanted to come there as a statement about themselves and their values and to say, we stand for something else. I mean, I think that's, that's where the media tried to... The, trip people up by focusing on Minister Farrakhan. You know, he must be given his respect because he's the one to call for this, and I don't think there's any other black leader who could have gathered a million plus men today in the United States of America. But despite that, everybody there was not there just for Minister Farrakhan. It was bigger than that. It was about you know, African-American males. I don't, I mean, I, you can speak to this much better than I can. Mm -hmm. I don't think most of them were there because of Farrakhan. I, mean, he, I don't understand. I know it's true, and other people said that. And he, in fact, said it. Look, I mean, you know, I did it. Mm -hmm. God wanted me to do this. Right. What is it about him that enabled him to do this? Well, and why could he only do this? Because the idea was very powerful. Well, that's, that's a hard question to answer, but I could say and all my heart that if Colin Powell <laughs> had called for this march, very few people would have, would have showed up for that. And, I, and it was interesting because he was commenting on the march. He said, I like the ideal, but I don't like who, who came up with the ideal. Well, someone should ask him, how come you didn't come up with the ideal? Yeah. You know, but he, he's not thinking like that. Let's what? talk about the movie, please. I, I, <laughs> I could tell you were getting please. a little nervous there. All right, bus. Get on the bus. Let's take a look at this. Set it up. I mean, the idea is the what idea happens to people who are going to the million? Yes, we, 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 we have 12 individuals who board a bus in South Central Los Angeles. Right. Total strangers. And they're making a 3,000-mile trip, 72-hour long trip across this country, across the United States of America to Washington, D.C. And uh, we have a a father and son tethered together. Right. A police cop, a cop, a gay couple. Ozzie Davis plays a very distinguished old man who is on the bus because he's sorry he didn't go to Washington for the march on Washington back in 1963. To hear King. To hear King for yeah. fear of losing his job. Uh, script was written by? Reggie Bikewood. Mm -hmm. Reggie, he's one of the head writers on New York Undercover. And why'd you get him to do it? great writer and he's, and, and he's quick too and he, <laughs> and he went to the march and he went to the march and yes. he gave it to you in three months or something no it was under two months under the first, two draft. Months for yes. first draft yes we shot yeah. this film in 18 days do you rewrite your scripts a lot for films you do oh yes we i mean we're the, the scripts are just really a blue blueprint and uh, as a starting point starting point okay set this up this is where the man's giving instructions that if you want to be on the bus to the million man march Yes, this is Charles Dutton, who Charles most, Dutton. I love most of you know from yeah, uh, his series Wilson, Rock. And from August Wilson. And, and August Wilson, Ma Rainey, and right. uh, The Piano right. Lesson. Right. Roll tape, here it is. Ossie Davis, right. you said to me as we were watching him, he's the epitome of the artist activist. Right. Meaning? He's one who's been able to use his art to champion the cause, I mean, the cause, you know, the movement. Ozzy was rubbing elbows with Paul Robeson, 
gave Malcolm's eulogy, knew Malcolm very well, mm. knew was Dr. Caught, Dr. Actually, King. was caught in terms of the split between Malcolm and, yes, tried as to you be, know better than I do, tried Malcolm to be the, and Martin. Try to be the mediator. Right. Knew Dr. King, and he's always, always, always tried to use his art to, you know, for, for yeah. our people. Is that part of what you resonates with you and what you want to do? Well, it really depends on the film because uh, I think because of really, as you know, people like to box you in and try to label you. And because the films do the right thing, jungle for you, Malcolm X, because now you'll probably like, get on the bus. <laughs> you know, um, um, Spike is a, a filmmaker who, whose films only deal with yeah. black issues. And who has and an agenda. And, and, and the agenda and his films just deal with racism in America. Right. Now that is true of those films, but I've done other films that, that 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 issue doesn't even come up. And those furthermore, those aren't the only type of films I want to do. I want to do movies about sports, I want to do musicals, I love to do a western, you know, so my my range of stuff I wanna yeah. do it is very is is varied. Could 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 you be what was the last film you made before this? Girl Six. Oh that's right. And before mm -hmm. that was what? Clockers. Clockers. Well, Clockers is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a film, you weren't even scheduled to be the director. Right. You came into it after, was it uh, Scorsese? Scorsese. Bowed out to go do something else. I forgot. Casino. To do Casino. Uh, are you likely to be hired by some traditional movie that's being made by some studio out there saying, let's get Spike to do this. He's a good filmmaker. Let's get him to tell this story. Is that well, likely to happen? Or is Spike not even considered because everybody knows Spike is out there wanting to do his thing, period. No, I get uh, asked to do stuff and uh, most of the time I turn it down. Because? <laughs> the material has no interest to me. So you want to make the kind of films you want to make. Hmm? Yes. And, and you're not and, you know, interested in achieving some other kind of status, some other place. Not really. And, and I'm not going to complain because until Jackie Robinson Every film I ever wanted to make, I made, and, and that's very rare. And, you know, I've done, Get on the Bus is the 10th film I've done, and, you know, in this, my first decade as a filmmaker. So I've made a film a year, and so we're, we're proud of that. All right, take a look at this. this we're going we're gonna to promote this film, aren't we? Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. Uh, used to, you used to gangbang. This is a man speaking about his bloody childhood as a gang member. Take yes. a look. Uh, this is also a character in this film, I'm told, you know, who wears a bow tie. Mm -hmm. And you expect there to be some payoff mm -hmm. from this character. Doesn't happen. Why should there be? I don't know. I'm just asking. Where'd you read that at? I was told that. See, you got to see the movies now. Then well, I couldn't see this movie. You know what I had to do today? I, I would have uh, liked to have seen it. I know. You know. I know. So tell me about it. I mean, was there a reason that... Well, we just had, this is a low-budget film, so we'd had to have some extras on the bus who didn't speak, so he was one of those people. What did you think of the Simpson trial? I had Johnny Cochran on. Yeah. A show that, we, an hour we did a show together. Mm -hmm. Interesting guy. What did you think of the Simpson version? What was amazing to me was to see white Americans react to the verdict and, like, all of a sudden... All of a sudden, the American judicial system had to be overhauled. Because <laughs> they didn't like the verdict. Because they didn't like the verdict. Forget about all the injustice that's been done up to this point yeah. in the history of this country. But because this one incident, the whole judicial system has to be thrown out. Did and you, for a moment, looking at that entire experience and the reaction to that verdict, say there's a movie there somewhere that I'd like to make? No. Nothing. You didn't want to touch it? Uh-uh. To what? You know, Charlie, I, either I want to do a movie about a subject matter or I don't. It's something right. that, it's a feeling I have. And uh, I just didn't have it for that film. What do you think the self-image of Spike Lee is? I mean, what do you think the image of Spike Lee is? And how does it vary from your self-image? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't really care anymore because I'm really past the point of, of I'm, I've done 10 films and I'm really past the point of, of telling white America 
I don't hate white people and telling people with the Jewish religion, I'm not anti-Semitic and I'm not anti-white. You know, I'm past that. And, you know, people are going to have their own perception. They really want to do it and the media is going to try to, to paint you the way they want. You know, when, for me, the most damaging thing was that Esquire, doing when Malcolm X was coming out, they had me on the cover of Esquire. And the title of the article was Spike Lee Hates Your Cracker Ass. And the way they positioned, it was like those, if you read that, you would think that was a quote, that those words actually came out of my mouth. It was some headline writer, a cover story writer. Hmm? It was some writer who put a cover to sell magazines. It was magazines. the editor that did that. The editor of Esquire at that time. Yeah. Now uh, you know. So, you know, if somebody sees the article, why would they want to, if they believe I said that, why would they even want to yeah. see my films? Is it a kind of resignation saying, you know, you can't fight it, you can't do anything about it, people are going to believe what they want to believe, I'm going to live my life, I know who I am, I know... I wouldn't use the, the word, I, th I, don't, I don't think I'll use the word resignation, Oh, you don't but, like that word anyway, because it looks but, like you're passive, and you don't no, want to be passive. No, the thing is that I have too many things I want to do. Like what? I, I want to make films, you know? You know, I want to have a bigger family. You know, I can't worry about what other people think all the time. Or that's, that detracts you from what you have to do. I really believe I was put on this earth to make films. And so that's what I'm going to do. And all the other stuff, you know, I, I don't have time nor the energy. The, you know, we're only here in this earth, you know, so much. So I'm not going to waste precious moments <laughs> worrying about that stuff. And, and you believe you're doing exactly what you should be doing? I believe it wholeheartedly. I do, I do too. Yeah. Get on the bus as a film. Spike Lee is a guest. We'll be right back. Stay with us.